Hello everyone, welcome back to Shawcode. Today I'm going to be teaching you how to make and apply tuples in Python. I have lots of experience in Python and by the end of this tutorial you will have a really good understanding of Python tuples. Okay, now a tuple is another collection type. Last video we learned about lists. If you haven't seen that video, there is a link to the playlist in the description or you can click on the card in the top right of the screen. A tuple is a collection that is ordered but is unchangeable you are unable to modify them partway through the program. This is what makes them different to lists. You may be thinking, why would I use a tuple instead of a list when I can't change it? Why don't I just create a list and not change it? Well, tuples are actually faster than lists. What I mean by this is they take less time to access. It's only by a few milliseconds usually. When you start getting into huge tuples and lists in big programs, the difference is quite noticeable. Tuples are also safer and you can't accidentally change them during a program. So to recap, they are unchangeable and they are ordered. Now let's move on to making some tuples. So just open up idle and just bring up a new file. So what we want to do first is just set up a tuple, so my tuple equals and make some round brackets and let's just have in here uh, just names of people, so George separated by commas, Jack, Jeff and Callum. Okay, so that, that's all a tuple is, it's just you set it out the exact same way as you do with a list, apart from instead of square brackets, you use round brackets. And we can just print out as usual, my tuple. And let's save this. And if we run it, we just print out the tuple. And you separate them with commas like lists, it's exactly the same apart from these parentheses right here. You can access them the same way as lists, so let's print my tuple 1 and that will print out jack, yep there we go, because remember 0, 1, 2, 3, you just print out the index. We can also do negative indexing, it's just the same, so we'll print out Callum with negative indexing, yep there we go. I'm going to go a bit faster on this accessing because we already covered it last video, so if you haven't seen that make sure you go check it out. And you can also do ranges, so print my tuple. Uh, let's just go to three. I'll just print out George, Jack and Jeff. You can do index ranges, negative index ranges, it's all just the same. Now what I said earlier about tuples being unchangeable there is actually a way you can bypass this, although it is a bit pointless because you might as well just have a list. But if you want to do it, you can. So what we do is, I'm just going to get rid of all this first, bit keeper tuple. So if we just make a new variable called y and we do list my tuple, it just creates a new variable called y. It copies all of that data from my tuple and turns it into a list. And then we can do y like 0 equals modified. And then we do my tuple equals tuple y. So that basically just copies out y and converts it back to a tuple. Then if we print out my tuple, As you can see, we've actually modified the tuple. There's not much point in doing it, you might as well just use a list. It's a lot easier than writing out, what, four lines, three lines of code, just to change it. We can also check if an item is in a tuple, so if... George in, tu in my tu tuple print George is in my tuple. Okay, save it and run it. As we can see, George is in my tuple. It's literally just the same uh, in operator as we learned last video. It's basically just the same thing as with lists with the if and in. It's the exact same thing apart from it's with a tuple. 
I'm just showing you that tuples and lists are very similar in their uh, functionality and how you can access them. One thing I forgot to mention in the previous video is how to get the length of something, so this applies to tuples as well as lists. To see how many items your tuple or your list has, you can use the length function. So I'm going to print when my tuple. Run it. We get four because it has four items in this. And if we create a quick list, my list. Let's just create a list of numbers. Uh, let's actually get five in there. Uh, print the length of my list. It works just the same. Print out five because there's five items in the list. If you are enjoying the video so far or have learned something new, be sure to give this video a like. It really does help me out. Anyway, as I was saying, if you want to create a tuple with just one item, you need to have a comma after the first item. This way Python will read it as a tuple and not just a number or a string or whatever your data is. So, if we call it one tuple equals hello, we need to have a comma after it to show that it is a tuple, otherwise Python will just think that it's a string. That is a string. That is a tuple. Another thing that I forgot to mention in the last video that applies to both tuples and lists is that you can join uh, multiple tuples or lists together. So if we make another tuple called second tuple, uh, hello, there, then we could do my tuple plus equals second tuple, and then print my tuple. Ooh. It's hard typing and speaking at the same time. Um, so as you can see, we've concatenated two tuples together. So as you can see, we got the first one, but we've also added the items from the second tuple. There are a couple of tuple methods to talk about as well. Uh, there is the count method. I'm just going to get rid of this quick. What that does is it returns the number of times a value appears in a tuple. For example, if I had a tuple that had three lots of the same value, the count method would return three. So let's just create a, another tuple. So count tuple equals high, high, high. And then if we do count tuple, dot count searching for high sorry we need to print this out actually print yeah as you can see we get three because there's three lots of high and we're searching for how many times high appears in that tuple and then the final method we should learn is um, the index method this searches the tuple for a value and returns the position of where it was found, or it returns the index of that value. Alright, so let's just get an example of that. So, print my tuple dot index uh, Jeff. And we'll get to because it's looking where does Jeff appear in this tuple? Oh, it appears at index 2. Let's print out index 2. As a quick side note, guys, make sure to leave a comment about whether you prefer lists or tuples. I will reply to as many comments as I can. Okay, that's all there is to do with tuples. They are slightly different to lists, the main thing being that tuples are unchangeable. They are also faster, but you are losing out on the option to change them. What I recommend you do now is get some practice tuples and try some stuff out yourself that we have learnt today. That way, you will have a great understanding of tuples and how they operate. Now, I'm going to end the video here. Next video, we will have a break from collections and do a little bit more on strings. They have a couple of extra things to learn about, and you should find them easy to pick up after watching this video and the last video. If you have any questions or comments, be sure to leave them down below. Also, give this video a big fat thumbs up if it was useful or you enjoyed it. Doing that really does help me out a lot. Make sure you subscribe for more Python tutorials so you don't miss out on any. That's it from me. Cheers. Goodbye.